Today's video is how to on setting up a RC airplane. So let's get started. We need to go to system setup. So we'll use the shortcut. Hold the scroll wheel and hold the power button. Let go of the power button while still holding the scroll wheel. Now we're in system setup. Model select. We've got three ways we can add a new model. We can add new model, which is going to give us a clean slate, no settings or configurations to start with. Add new bind and fly. So let's say we just went to the hobby store and bought a new plane. We could just click on the model and it's going to pre-configure everything for us. Or you can use add new from template. That allows you to use a bind and fly template or a safe template. So we're going to back up because we're actually going to start with a fresh model. Create new model. We need to click on the icon. Change that to an airplane. Then we're going to click create. Go to model name. We're going to change this on test. Now what this does is it starts with the letter that is highlighted. So it's got a capital A. So it's going to start with the capital A. We'll go down to capital T. Then now it's in lower case and we're going to just label this one test. Next is aircraft type. This is going to be if you have your surface controls on different channels or if you have a flap system. In this video, we're going to talk about normal airplane setup and a flap airplane setup. So we're going to aircraft type. If it's just a normal four channel plane, it doesn't have flaps, you can just go with this. Normal wing, normal tail. If it's an airplane with flaps, the most common setup is for your flap servos left and right and your aileron servos left and right to be connected through a Y harness. So two servos for the flaps connected to a Y harness which goes to one channel on the receiver. Two servos connected to the ailerons which goes to a Y harness and that goes into one channel on the receiver as well. If your plane is like that, you go into wing and change it to one aileron, one flap. Now disregard that it just shows you one servo here because that's what you're basically doing when you hook up a Y adapter is you're converting it to a one servo configuration because you're only going on one channel of the receiver. So hopefully I'll, that wasn't too much for y'all, but basically to simplify it, if you have Y adapters for your ailerons and your flaps, one aileron, one flap. Flap mode setups and spoken flap modes, we're not going to get into that in this video. Next is channel assign. You don't have to set anything up in here, but there's one thing I want to show you in this menu. You see you got your standard configured inputs is your RX port assignment. This is helpful if you're new to Spectrum or you don't know the channel order. You can go in here and look at this RX port assignment screen and figure out which servo lead needs to be plugged into which channel on the receiver. As you can see on this AR620, it doesn't actually say the names of the channels. It just has one, two, three, four, five, and six. So you might be hooking this up and thinking, well, which channel's which? You know, which one do I plug into? You can go on this screen, and this is a default port assignment. Every spectrum set up this way, which it's T A E R. Throttle for channel one, aileron for channel two, elevator for channel three, rudder for channel four. And then, you know, if you have gear, it's five and six is flap. So, but just the standard setup is throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, which is T-A-E-R. We're going to back out of that menu. And that's all we're going to set in here as far as configuring the plane. And you might go ahead and set up your pre-flight setup, but we're going to skip past that for now and go ahead and bind up our transmitter and receiver. Now, in this video, you're going to see that I've got the receiver and the transmitter close together anytime you're doing a bind process don't have your transmitter and receiver close like this i'm just doing it so y'all can see it together here you want to have your transmitter at least a few feet away from your receiver so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and power up the system and we're going to power up a receiver this receiver is a spectrum with a bind button you can use a bind plug but i'm going to use a bind button and you can either one hold the bind button and power the system up or two you can power the system up and just hold the bind button for a few seconds and it'll go into bind mode 
The way that you know you're in bind mode is the light on the receiver will start flashing. Once the bind process is complete, it will go solid and then the radio will tell you complete. So let's go ahead and do the bind process. I'm going to plug up our system. I'm going to hold the bind button in. You'll notice that it's going to start flashing. Click on bind. Now we have our system bound together. So the next thing we can do, which is always the first thing I do once I've got it bound up and the motor system is active to the transmitter, is I go ahead and set up a throttle cut. Scroll down the throttle cut. You can see where it says switch. We're gonna assign a switch. The way you do that is push enter and then you toggle the switch. Now you can go in here and you can scroll to you know the switch that you want but that's just the easiest way when it says inhibit just click on it and then toggle the switch that you want to use position minus 100 percent i change that to 130 percent now we've got our throttle cut set up you'll notice it goes from we've got our throttle all the way down it'll say minus 100 percent when we flip the switch it'll go to minus 130 percent so now when we do our throttle up and down, it's not active. We need to set up the dual rates and expo. The simplest way to do dual rates and expo is to put it on one switch. So for this video, I'm gonna use switch C. So we'll go down. First thing we need to do is assign the switch. So come down here to switch, and then toggle switch C. That's the way you can do a quick assign on anything throughout the menus is just click on switch and toggle the switch you want. I'll show you another example. We can toggle F and change it to F. Toggle D, change it to D. So that's the easiest way to do it. You can go in here and scroll through the different letters if you want to, but just get in the habit of doing that and it's going to allow you to progress faster. So push enter. And you can put your low rates at the top or at the bottom. I personally always put them at the bottom position too. That way you got low, medium, and high. If you did it this way, low, medium, high, it seems like it would be in a reverse order. So we'll start there. We're going to go up to our ailerons. In the E-flight planes, most of them are 70% low, 100% for high. That's a good place to start if you don't have an owner's manual or you have an older plane that you can't find the owner's manual even online you could start with low 70 100 percent on high and you know then you can adjust the plane as you get a couple of flights if it's a warbird you may not want to put your ailerons at high you may want to start at a lower value about 50 or 60 percent so let's put in our low rate we've got switch c in position two we're going to dial it down to 70 percent and you can see it adjusts both numbers. Now we're gonna to go to mid, adjust this down to 85. And you don't have to push enter and then flip the switch and press enter again and then change the values. You can just leave on the rates and then it'll allow you to change it as you toggle the switch. So now we're gonna push enter because we have them all in there. Let's go to our elevator, sign switch C. We're going to go to our low rate position two. Put that at 70%, mid rate 85%. So I'm actually putting in triple rates, having a low, medium, and high, but you can do low rates if you want, just put 70% and 100% in. But I like having that middle number. That way, you know, if 70 might be too low and 100 might be too high, then you got a rate for in the middle. So a, a medium between the two. So we've got that one set. Then we're going to go into rudder. We need to go ahead and assign that to switch C as well. Go to low race, position two, 70%, 85%, and then we have a hundred set. So that's going to set up our dual rates and expo, which in this case we're actually doing triple rates. One thing to keep in mind is you can set the expo if you want on the maiden flight. If there's a certain amount of expo that you normally use, then you can go ahead and put that in here. And you have to do that for each individual one. So if I went down here to 
70 percent the low rate and i put in 10 percent expo when i go to the medium middle rate i've got to change it there as well so it's the same as putting the rates in you've got to set it for each individual position on the switch which is your low medium and high rates so now we've got our low medium and high rates set up i'm not going to get into much of the expo today because i'm gonna have a separate video on that but i'm going to show you all in that video how to set up your rates so that way every plane you fly the sticks will feel the same even though the expo percentage will be different values based upon the throws that we're using so be sure to check that video out if you've got questions on how to dial in the dual rate and expo we'll go down to the flap system because we've already set up our throttle cut and the next three options are not needed for a basic plane setup flap system flaps are normally assigned to switch d so let's go ahead and do that push enter on switch toggle our d switch and here you have your flap and your elevator percentages the flaps going to be the percentages called out in the book or it's going to be the measurements in millimeters which you'll actually adjust this on the plane so let's say in the book it calls out for no flaps is hundred percent half flaps or takeoff flaps is going to be position one and it's zero percent Full flaps, it says in the book, minus 100%. To the right is your elevator mix. So some airplanes call for an elevator mix in the book. You will go ahead and put those in. And they correspond with the position next to them. So if we go to position one, which is half flaps or takeoff flaps, then it says put 5% up elevator. We'll go to minus 5%. And we toggle down to position 2. As you notice, the slider comes down. That's going to be our landing flaps or our full flaps. And that's going to be negative 10%. So that's how you set up your flap percentages and your elevator percentages. As you adjust the switch D, you'll notice down here in the monitor that it'll correspond with that as well. So when we go to our half flaps, we'll notice that the elevator value, which is right here, will go to minus 5%. When we go to full flaps, the elevator value will go to minus 10%. So you can see both of those numbers changed. Last thing we need to set is our flap speed. So the higher that number is, the slower the flaps will deploy. Normally two seconds is a good speed to set this on. However, you can change that to what you want depending on the airplane because if you go to half flaps, maybe you want a little bit slower than two seconds or maybe two seconds too fast because it's the flaps don't come down as far. Well, when the flaps go to, down to full, maybe that's a big jump between half and full. So maybe you want to speed it up a little bit more. That being said, they have added a feature in the new NX series that the DX series didn't have. You can set the speed based upon the flat position. So see how I'm at position one for our half flaps? I'm going to put it at, let's say, three seconds because it's a short distance between no flaps and half flaps. However, let's say it's a further distance between half flaps and full flaps. I'm going to click down to full flaps. You can see it went back to normal. I'm going to change that to two seconds. If you want it the same, go back in and set this to two seconds. Next, we'll set up the timer. Let's say the book calls out for three and a half minutes. So let's scroll down to the minutes, press enter. Go to three minutes. Go to seconds, change it to 30. And then I'll leave my timer set up just like this because I like to have the useful throttle time. So anytime I go above 25%, the timer will count down. Anytime I go below 25%, the timer will stop. Next is timer alerts. You have different events that it'll call out during your flight and you can change this to what you prefer. I'm gonna show you how I set mine up and you know, you may use it or find that you have a, you know, a more preferred method once you get a couple of flights in and you can change it to what you want to. I leave every minute down on inhibit. I change one minute remaining to voice. 
I turn 30 seconds to inhibit, 10 seconds to one second to inhibited, expiration, turn to voice, and every minute I turn to voice. So this is gonna do a one minute remaining call out, an expiration call out, and an every minute call out. Every minute's gonna allow it to say, if we've got a five minute flight, when it goes to four minutes, three minutes, two minutes, one minute, it will call out all the minutes once it hits that mark. Last is timer start, timer stop, timer reset. I just leave timer reset on tone, that way when I push the clear button at the top, it'll just beep validating that I've pushed a button in. Timer start, timer stop, I turn those off on every model. Even though I use the useful throttle time, to me there's not a reason why I need it to beep every time I go above and below 25%. So now that I have it on inhibit, you can see you don't hear that. When you do have it on, this is what it sounds like. So as you can see, it constantly going on and off depending on you know how you fly your airplane around that 25 percent throttle so change those back to inhibit now we've completed the rc plane setup on our spectrum nx transmitter i appreciate you all watching today go ahead and push that like button for me and subscribe to the channel if you want to see future videos and i'll see you guys on the next one